Matrices are rather ubiquitous in applied science for the chief reason that they're very good as representational tools for sets of data and encoding information. So matrices are typically first encountered by students in a math class in the context of solving what's called a system of linear equations. So for instance, here's a trivial example of what would be called a two by two system of linear equations. That's referred to as a two by two system because there are two equations and two unknowns. And these are linear equations essentially because the variables are raised to the first power. I can think of this system as sort of comprising a few parts, right? Uh, for instance, I'm going to define what's called the coefficient matrix of the system by literally just plucking out the coefficients appearing on the left-hand side of the equation. So in order, this would be a two by two matrix. So in order, those coefficients are one, one, two, one. So that is known as the coefficient matrix for this particular system. I can look at now the right-hand side of the equation. Notice, yeah, that's really a degenerate matrix or one-dimensional matrix, in other, other words, a vector. And that vector on the right-hand side is usually, by convention, denoted with a B. Okay? And I'm just going to pluck off, essentially, those coefficients or constants, uh, 2 and 3 in order. Okay. And if, if I put everything together, where x is the vector xy, and we'll explain sort of this in more detail when we get to uh, operations including matrix multiplication in just a second. But basically, if you sort of take all those pieces, you can tie them all together in this nice convenient way. And this is known as kind of the fundamental matrix equation for that particular system. There's one nice use of matrices that students commonly encounter sort of earlier in their math careers. Another example would be something like this. Granted, we're probably familiar with polynomials a little bit, so let me just sort of make up a, a quick example. Of so there is a cubic or third degree polynomial. Now I can take that polynomial, I could do lots of things with it, I could study it as a function. Here, however, I just want to think of just encoding that polynomial, it's sort of informational content. So what I could do is convert this polynomial into a vector. Now I can think of, I'm going to sort of move right to left here. Um, as is done conventionally. I can think of sort of the first bit of information, just the constant part of the uh, polynomial. So I'm just going to plug in a negative 4 there. The linear coefficient is a 10 for this particular cubic polynomial. Now notice um, the coefficient for the quadratic term, the x squared term, is a 0. Now I need to fill that in as a placeholder to properly encode this polynomial as a vector. And then lastly, I can look at sort of the cubic term here as well. So there is a vector form, sort of a vector encoding of that particular polynomial. One other thing to maybe mention here is you could have a very large matrix. We could just call it sort of the X matrix. And the X matrix in a lot of sort of applications in statistics could just represent our data set. When we perform an experiment or we do some sampling, we collect data and I can then represent that data and code it in a matrix. I could have data arranged in columns here where each column represents an individual subject in a sample set and we can just encode this. Let's say we get the number 0 and the number 100 and the number, uh, let's say, 135. Okay, so what does this all mean just to make up sort of a toy example? Well, I can encode a data set from a sample. 0 represents the gender of an individual. So zero could represent male, one could represent female or something like that. And maybe the second row represents the weight of the individual and the third row represents oh, their IQ or something like that. So point being, I can take a big data set and represent it conveniently and code it as a matrix. And we might want to do that because once we know enough about linear algebra, that is the study of essentially matrices and their algebraic properties, we could then ask, well, given that data set, can you find me a best fit curve for that data so I can then make predictions. I can forecast essentially for unknown data points. And that process is known as, generally speaking, regression. So if I take my data, encode it as a matrix, and then sort of use the various algebraic properties of matrices to kind of find a best fit curve or best fit polynomial, that process um, is extraordinarily fruitful in applied science and that's known as regression.